What's up you guys, welcome back and welcome if you're new. In today's video, I'm right here at my good friend Jerry's shop and we're gonna be installing a brand new Air Raid snorkel onto the budget Tacoma. We're gonna show you guys the process and everything like that. Cool thing about today's video is on this installation specifically with this snorkel, it's super slim line and looks super clean. You guys will see at the end of the video when we show you guys how it's gonna look, but I can guarantee you guys, you're gonna wanna buy it. If you guys do, check out the description box below. There's a discount code for you guys. Let's get into the video. Video. We're back here in Beast Fab. My name is Jerry. We're gonna be working on Jesse's uh, budget bill right here. We're gonna be installing a air rated snorkel. Anything else you guys need, all my information is gonna be on the box down below. Let's get it started, okay? Well, as always, I'm gonna show you guys what kind of comes inside the box before we get started. This is gonna be the snorkel head. It's super slim line, like I was saying in the beginning of the video. It looks super clean. You guys will see when it's installed. Same thing as far as the actual snorkel, as you guys can tell. It's a lot more thin than any other ones on the market. So it looks super clean. That way, everything just kind of fits with the Tacoma. It also is going to come with a template like this uh, you guys will see kind of what this is but it's going to go in back of here you guys will see how that works it's going to come with hardware and then it also comes with this rubber piece here which you guys will see jerry was saying we're going to be doing this on the budget build tacoma if you guys haven't been following it make sure to go back into my videos we haven't posted too much about it but basically this one is my cousin's what we have installed so far just in case you guys are curious is a rough country lift front and rear uh, we have some tires and some summit off-road wheels and some beast fab sliders on there as you guys can tell so little by little we're building this up and we're trying to keep it on more of a budget side but of course we're still going to throw in some quality parts here and there and that's what we're doing today with jerry so this fender here is going to go bye bye there's going to be a nice hole there but it's going to serve a purpose so whenever we do go down to like uh, maybe some mud puddles or stuff like that the engine will get hydro locked so let's do it so the first thing we're going to do is uninstall the intake box here if you guys want to see a more in-depth detailed video me and jerry have made one already it's going to be in the description box below uh, but we'll still kind of walk you through this process and as always if you guys cannot accomplish this install it looks too hard for you guys make sure to just hit them up it's going to be in the description box below let them know i sent you so you guys get an awesome deal one thing we wanted to mention is disconnect the negative of the battery whenever you guys are working on the truck As you guys just saw, we had to, of course, uh, take out the intake filter. We took out the intake box, which was down there with just a couple bolts. Uh, so once again, if you guys do want to watch our in-depth install video, it's going to be similar to one that we did in the past. That'll also be in the description box below. If not, you can just hit up Jerry to do this for you. That way you don't have to worry about anything. But yeah, so first step, take out that intake box. Up next, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be lifting up the truck. So if you're doing this at home, of course, you want to maybe get a jack, kind of lift up the truck. Reason why is we're gonna have to uh, go underneath here to make our life easier we're gonna be removing the wheel and then we're gonna be removing this wheel well that's underneath just to make our life easier so up to you if you want to do this at home it's it's possible but it's gonna take a lot longer now we remove the tire up next like I told you guys we're gonna be removing the wheel well so all the way around you're gonna notice there's like a couple bolts there and then there's gonna be clips going all the way around we're gonna need to remove those to pull the wheel well back uh, you can completely remove it if you want to to make it easier. Wanna pop out? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you gotta feed your hand. Because that fuck me it takes. Subscribe. 
One thing on Air Raid's instructions, they do recommend you remove the fender. Not exactly sure why. We're not going to be removing it just because we don't need to. There's a way around it, so we're going to leave that in for now. There's the hole there that we're going to be working with, and what's going to be going there is that rubber piece here. We'll show you guys, of course, right now once we get to that step, but I wanted to show you guys the hardware before anything else. So I opened up the baggie. Inside, it, this is what you get. If you guys do remember, I was talking about some clips. If you break them, uh, you're, it's going to suck, but it looks like they actually provide them in the box, so just don't scream if you guys do break them. And then uh, noticing right here, as far as all the hardware, you're going to have uh, three of these locking nuts. Uh, they're going to have three of these bad boys here, uh, three metal washers, and three like rubber ones. This section here is going to be for the fender, which goes connected to the bottom end of the snorkel. And then you're going to notice uh, you get some more of these here, a couple screws and washers. That's going to be for the bracket, which goes on the top end where the snorkel head is. Like I said, if you do remove your fender, they do provide you with new clips. So if you break them, don't worry about it. They provide them there. It's also going to come with some Loctite for the screws. Uh, you want to put this on just to make sure they don't come off because then it's going to be really hard to retight and stuff later in the future. And it's going to come with all these other little fittings that you're going to need. So uh, now working on our stock intake box, once again, the one we took off the truck, this is the stock one. Uh, you're going to need to remove this fitting here. So if you get like a, a panel removal tool or a flathead, you want to go in between here. As you can tell, there's a hole there. That's because when it was pushed in all the way, uh, it's clipped in over here on this side, which you can't see right now because we already removed it. But just giving you an idea, same thing on the other side. This would be clipped into a little clip on this side. Just get it with the flathead and it'll pop right off. And then after that, you just remove it completely and it should slide right off as you can tell. Now that we removed this section here from the stock intake box, uh, we went back to our Air Raid uh, kit. Inside, you're gonna get a ring like this, which is gonna be kind of like a spacer. Uh, I'll show you guys what this does. And then you're also gonna wanna go ahead and grab this piece here, and I'll show you guys what to do with it. You're gonna notice right here on the stock box, there's like a uh, piece right here that's kind of sticking up. You're gonna need to shave that. Once you're done with it, it should look like this. As you can tell, now it's nice and clean, super flat. So next step, going back to this hose, like I told you guys, that comes in the kit and this spacer here. If you look inside, there's gonna be a groove, which is right about here. If you can see that, there's going to be one cut there, one cut there all the way. And then this one is just kind of cut from the inside. So noticing on the spacer, you're going to have like this little lip here. That is going to go into that center there. Now that we're done with this step, uh, one downside to this air raid that I can uh, critique on is uh, moving on over here inside the instruction kit, you're going to get like a paper like this. This is basically going to be your outline. I don't know why they provided it in two pages and why they couldn't just provide one whole page for the outline. But what you have to do here is basically cut it out and uh, move on to the truck. So you want to cut both of these out on the edges. But like I said, this is kind of one downside. I don't know why they couldn't just provide you one big piece of paper and be done with it. So now this is just kind of more work on the end user. It's fine. I mean, we'll handle it. Just want to let you guys know. So just to show you, we've now taped both together. We've cut it out to what we need. Uh, we've also cut the center off. As you guys can tell, you had to cut the center out right here. And now we're going to be ready to prep the truck as far as what lines to cut and drill out over there. To update you guys, as you can tell, we put down the template. Uh, we've put it basically where it needs to be, measured everything out. Underneath this piece of paper, if you guys can tell, there's yellow tape. Uh, reason why we did that is just so when we go ahead and drill it out, uh, paint won't be splashing everywhere. And over time, that's really, really bad. thing I did forget to mention in the beginning of the video, if you guys do have some touch-up paint, it's good to get. Uh, just I'll show you guys why once we're done with this process, but it's good to have at this moment now. To show you guys without the paper, as you can tell, there's punch one, punch two, and punch three. And of course, there is the center. Once again, the tape is used, so that when, we go, when we go to drill it out, uh, we don't have paint splatter everywhere, and then it starts chipping the paint, and that won't be good. So uh, just make sure you guys are sure of doing this, because once you do it, of course, you can't go back unless you buy a brand new fender.
As you can tell, uh, the pilot holes are drilled out, one there, one there, and there. Those are half inch. Here in the center, we've also done pilot holes, as you can tell. So there's two ways of doing this center section here. You can either go to the store and find maybe a four inch uh, saw, a circular saw, so that way you can cut out a correct four inch circle down the middle here. Or the second way, which is the more budget way, is the way we're gonna be showing you guys, so that way you guys can uh, kind of do it at home like this instead of having to go buy more tools. You cut out some holes like this just to kind of start it and then you go ahead and go with the Dremel all the way around in a circular motion. Uh, you want to make sure to keep that straight though. That's one thing we did want to let you guys know. So if you guys don't want to do it that way, like I said, you could go to the hardware store, find maybe a four inch uh, circular saw uh, for your drill and that way it cuts it out perfectly. Just to give you guys an idea, we wanted to show you that. All right, you guys, so as you can tell, now the hole is done. Like I said, this is a four inch hole. All the other ones are gonna be a half inch. Up next, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be removing the tape, and then uh, we'll go ahead and kind of shave down the area, make sure that it's very nice and fine, so you can get some sandpaper to do that. And then you can go ahead and just kind of use your touch-up paint. That's what I was saying. It's good to get some touch-up paint for this specific installation. If you don't have touch-up paint, you can also just use like maybe some black paint uh, to go ahead and put it on the surface there. That way, over time, it doesn't rub. We're gonna go ahead and let this dry out. While this dries out, we're gonna move on to prepping the actual snorkel. So you're gonna notice right here at the bottom of the snorkel on the backside, uh, there's gonna be, like I told you guys, uh, three riv nuts. They're in there. Uh, so what we're gonna be doing to prep it is looking in our hardware bag. As I told you guys earlier, this is what we're gonna be using for that section there. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start grabbing probably the screws and inside comes provided the Loctite and we're gonna be putting some Loctite on these bad boys here. Those are gonna go in this section here, which we'll show you guys right now and then we'll start prepping that as well. Now that we installed it, I'm gonna kind of explain what we just did. Like I told you guys, grab the one, two, and three little bolts. Uh, you put just a little bit of Loctite, it goes a long way, so you could either go a strip this way or just put it a strip around and then you just basically by hand, go ahead and screw it all the way in, all the way in, all the way in until it goes to the end. You guys will feel it once it touches the ground. Uh, so from there, you're gonna notice uh, we've also pulled aside the washers and nuts. It's gonna be three of these like plastic uh, nylon uh, rubber, or whatever you wanna call them washers. Metal ones here, and then three of these nylon locking nuts. So that's gonna be for the next step. So as you guys just saw, Jerry pulled the backing off of this piece here. Once you pull it off, it has sticky on one side, which is gonna go stuck onto this. So you're gonna have to match up the holes just like that with the screws we just installed. And you wanna make this as flush as possible. Basically what that's doing is just kinda of saving the paint of your fender and also reducing noise. Now we have it prepped, as you guys can tell, it's nicely installed. Take your time with it to make it a clean install. And in the next step, we're gonna be using these, these, and these for this specific install. But right now we're gonna skip that step and we're gonna be moving on to the roof of the truck. You guys will see why right now. Right, for this next step, you wanna go ahead and pull up your weather strip. Uh, what Jerry's doing right now is actually cleaning it off. Uh, reason why is there's going to be some sticky stuff underneath there that kind of gets stuck to the paint so just go ahead and kind of clean off the surface and then there's also like a tape covering up the holes uh, where we're going to be installing the bracket so you need to remove that tape so that's going to be that let me show you guys the hardware we're going to be using for this step for this section you want to go ahead and grab your bracket i go ahead and grab uh, two of these screws comes with four so grab two and that's what we're going to need to screw into the actual truck you'll see uh, the rest of them these other two there these two lock washers and washers those are going to be what's going to go uh, installed into the actual snorkel head you will see like i told you guys this bracket here is what's going to go on the roof you're going to notice uh, the way it's formed there's two holes there there's two holes right here on the side of it, as you guys can tell. So the ones that are flat going downwards, those are actually gonna be inserted there, as you can tell. That's what's gonna go onto the body of the truck. And this is basically gonna be in this orientation. So you're gonna notice uh, if you try to put your weather stripping back like that, it's not going to fit. So you're gonna need to mark kind of like a little cutout right here. And you're gonna wanna cut that out so that way the weather stripping can fit back in its place and you can install it properly. And then we'll move to the next step. So what you can see there is he's putting Loctite inside the holes from the factory on the truck of the body. And then what we're going to be doing here is he's going to, he's going to go ahead and put the bracket down, 
grab two of the screws that came provided that I told you guys and you want to just go ahead and hand tighten them for now into the body. And um, right now he's just kind of prepping the area to go ahead and cut out, like I said, the weather stripping so you can set it back down. You guys can remove it completely, but good luck because putting it back together, it probably won't seal properly. So that's up to you guys. You're gonna notice it looks super clean now and it's like factory, you'll never be able to tell. There's the bracket, let's do the next thing, which is gonna, which is gonna be moving on to the bottom. The next step, we're gonna be installing this. You're gonna wanna go ahead and match these studs here with the holes that we did cut out, which is on the fender right about there. You also wanna grab uh, the washers at this point and the nuts, like I told you guys, there's gonna be three of those and three of these and three of those. So let's go ahead and fit it on there. Put it in the hole, let's see if you can uh, aim. Uh, one came out there, one there, and one there. Pfft. All right, so now that you've accomplished that, up next what you're gonna need to do is uh, grab those washers that I told you guys and the nuts, and you're gonna wanna go ahead and hand tighten those three. And I don't know if you can see the position, but basically the rubber washer goes in first, closest to the fender, and then it's gonna be the metal washer, and then the, the nut. So we did the bottom end of the snorkel, we're gonna move on to the head, which is up here. So for this section here, if you guys do remember on the bracket, uh, I told you guys there's hardware, and there's like four bolts and uh, some locking washers and washers. So in that step there, you wanna go ahead and get them, which is what he has in his hand there. You wanna put the washer first onto the screw and then the locking washer and then of course the screw. And you hand tighten for now, just matching the holes. All right, so just to show you guys, that's how it should be. Um, you're gonna notice there's the screw, there's the locking washer and washer in the position. And right now we're just gonna hand tighten it and then we'll tighten them down later. Once we started them by hand, we then tighten them down all the way, as you guys can tell. This isn't going anywhere anymore. If I could tell you guys a quick tip is I'd suggest tightening down these first before you tighten the bottom ones. The reason why is right here, you don't really have much movement if you need to shift it around. At the bottom down there, uh, you have a lot more movement in behind the fender to go ahead and move the snorkel around so you can get the holes in properly and connect everything. So just quick tip, tighten this down first and then do the bottom. All right, so coming back to the bottom, like I told you guys, we left these for last. We just had hand tightened them. Now you get a size 10 millimeter socket and bolt all three of those nuts down. For this next step, you're gonna have a set of three hose clamps. Uh, you're gonna wanna go ahead and get the smallest one that comes provided. You're gonna have two that are the same size and then one smaller one grab the smaller one. Cool thing about Air Raid is they actually make them in black. Other companies, they make them chrome and then it kind of stands out. So having a black is really a plus. Now that you have the hose clamp that you're gonna need to install this, up next is you wanna go ahead and grab uh, this piece here. Uh, if you guys do remember the, the side with the cutouts, it's gonna be the side that goes into the intake box. So that's what's gonna go into that hole there. This other smaller side is what's gonna go connected into the actual intake there. Um, and for the small smaller side, that's where this uh, smaller hose clamp is gonna come into play, which is gonna go right about there. And then we're gonna have to feed it into that pipe there. So this is gonna be the fun part out of this whole installation. Quick tip, make sure you put your clamp first. And just leave it hanging there in the back. Because otherwise, good luck. Good luck. I don't know if you heard that, but you want to make sure that bolt is painting, pointing downwards so when you go and install it, you can still tighten that down. Slide some more around it. Like that. Now we're going to go to the funnest part. In person, I know on camera you guys are probably seeing better angle than we have, but in person, that top section there is what kind of gets fun because it's kind of hard to see up there. So it's more of like touch and fill to get it in the hole. Once you're happy with the position of the actual hose, uh, you know you can't push it in anymore. Uh, then you go ahead and slide over the hose clamp that I told you guys to previously uh, throw on there, which you guys can see it there. Just to show you guys really quick, so you're gonna want the hose clamp kind of in this thickness part there. Uh, tighten that down 
down and then you should be good in that section. So we're gonna move back out and continue. So coming inside the engine bay here, you're gonna notice there's the holes we, we just put through. One thing we did wanna let you know is, as you could tell, there's the slit there, there's the slit there. You wanna make sure those are pointing upwards and straight like that. Uh, the reason why is when you go to reinstall the intake box, you gotta remember those slits are gonna go connected into it. If you don't put this hose in correctly, uh, it's not gonna connect correctly or properly, I should say. So then you're not gonna have a correct seal and that defeats the purpose of the snorkel. So now that we have that uh, in its proper position, now we can go ahead and reinstall the wheel well back to how it was. So exactly the way you guys took it off, go ahead and put it back and you're good to go. We put everything back together. It looks factory once again. And like I had told you guys, if you guys do end up breaking any of these clips that are inside, do come provided in the box so you can go ahead and swap them out. The R's are good. And now all we need to do is move on to the engine bay, basically finish that up and then we'll throw on the head up there and we'll be done. Next section here, you wanna go ahead and get that spacer again uh, that I told you that's gonna fit into the pipe over there. What you wanna do here is slide it into the intake box here. You're gonna be using this notch as a reference with the notch where you had uh, cut off previously to make it nice and flush. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and put it over, make sure it's aligned properly. Once you have it aligned properly, that there is gonna go inserted into the hose. Now that you have it there, you wanna go ahead and get the biggest hose clamp uh, that comes provided. If you remember, there's two big hose clamps. Grab one, just slide it over just like that. You're gonna reinstall it into the hose. Like I told you, you match up the lines and you insert it in all the way. So once you've kind of checked, made sure that it's seating properly all the way around, now up next, you uh, go ahead and put your hose clamp in its position, tighten it down all the way. Once you've tightened it down all the way, go ahead and reinstall the three bolts that you had taken off. There's two inside and one closest to the cab on that side. Now all we have left over is gonna be installing the snorkel head, so you should have the head, and then you should also have one last bigger hose clamp left over. So we're gonna move on to that. I just wanted to show you guys as you guys can tell uh, these clips we didn't end up using them like I told you guys you don't need to remove the fender if you want to at least they provide them and these ones are the ones that go inside the fender well if you need them they're there but we're gonna save those for maybe a future project we don't need them now so let's move on to the next step so in this step here, you wanna go ahead and now put the hose clamp around the bottom end there. If you need to, you could go ahead and unscrew it to open it up a little more. But once you have it in that position, one thing we wanted to tell you guys, as you can tell, here's the name. You wanna make sure that the bolt is facing forward like this. That way you have room to tighten it down or unscrew it if you ever need to. You're literally gonna slide it right over, just like that. Make sure it's in its position. And then from the other side, go ahead and bolt it down snug. We now finished up the installation. It looks freaking awesome thanks to Jerry. He always kills it on every single install that he's ever done, at least for my truck or even the budget build. So it looks awesome. If you guys do want it, make sure to check out the description box below. What do you think about it? I mean, as you guys can tell, you know, um, it's, it's really a slim fit, you know, or like a non-rack uh, truck, I would say it's, it's the way to go. Yeah. But if when you have the, like the Prince rack and all that, I mean, it's gonna be a little bit of more modifications on the wind deflector and on the sides of the Prince and all that, or any other racks, but so far, you know, Overall. all good. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, um, a little tricks here and there, but nothing too crazy. <laughs> Overall, I just like the design of it, honestly. I mean, like you said, yeah. it's super slim line, exactly. and then just, I don't know, it, it looks cool. It looks Overall. more sporty. Exactly, it looks yeah. super sporty. Yeah. And uh, not like other ones, even talking about my own, it's pretty bulky. This one's not. And another thing too, as far as instructions and just the way it went put together, yeah. it was pretty simple, right? Simple, I mean, yeah. compared simple to forward. other ones. Yeah. I mean, you still need the correct tools to do it, but. Yeah, yeah. right measurements. <laughs> yeah. And right measurements, but overall, yeah. it seemed a little easier than other ones. Exactly. So if you guys do want it, like I said, check it out. And there's a discount code for you guys. So you want to go ahead and once again, just kind of reframe on what you do here, Jerry. Oh yeah, definitely. We uh, have uh, a lot of stuff here for you guys we do a lot of fabrication uh, we take care of all these trucks you know any other truck roading builds fabrication road performance high performance everything you know we do everything here we manufacture parts so just uh, give us a call should have said an email an email uh, my information is gonna be below and uh, we'll see you guys the next time okay Heck yeah peace <laughs>
subscribe.